Hey, welcome everybody. Um, I'm working in a pen test department. So we're pen testing web applications, we're pen testing IT infrastructure, and maybe sooner or later we're going to test blockchain. Um, since you know blockchain is becoming kind of a thing, people are running around and telling, hey, blockchain might be useful, Bitcoin is using it, and it might be useful for like the supply chain, for notary, for whatever use case you can imagine, blockchain is a solution. And what I tell you as well is that blockchain is not only a solution, it's the solution. Why? Because it's secure, it's immutable, and it's just awesome. And as a security guy, um, you're wondering, is it really secure? And then there are headlines like this. There are hacks, multi-million dollar hacks, money is getting stolen all the time, pretty every week. Um, they're stealing money in like budgets that you couldn't imagine. It's not about privacy, it's just about pretty much just money that's getting stolen. Um, and you wonder like, is this technology really secure? Um, and when you dive deeper, they're not hacking the blockchain. Um, so this is kind of boring, this is like application hacks. They're hacking your wallets, they may be hacking your database, they may be hacking your framework, they may be hacking just a simple WordPress, whatever. So this talk is not about dollar dollar Bitcoin hacks, okay? This talk is about a blockchain, blockchain protocol. Um, so if we go a step further, further the application, um, there's a comparison, simplified. Um, on the left-hand side is the web. There are, there's the application layer, which is pretty big, and you all might be familiar with that. There's like the Googles and the Facebooks and the Amazons, we all know. And they make up the big application layer on top of the internet protocols. They don't even have logos. They're like pretty basic layers that exist for long term. And on the other side, we've got a blockchain. And in the application layer, you might use that hopefully every day. Um, whatever, there's a Coinbase, there's Electrum, there are lots of wallets and exchanges and services that utilize the blockchain. And down there, there is the blockchain. So why is the one square way bigger than the other? That is because the value captured and the value generated um, can be compared like this. The value generated in the web applications, the value captured, the guys who take the money home in the web is the Googles and the Facebooks. The money um, making and the money um, generated in the blockchain world as a protocol level. At least this is what, um, what is the, the vision. Like the blockchain is being the, the web 3.0 and the blockchain is gonna disrus, dis, disrupt everything. So I was thinking, let's hack the protocol and not just the borrowing applications on top of that. So I was, I was having a look at the blockchain protocol and I was having a hard time. Like, what is the blockchain protocol? There are a lot of them outside there. And these are not altcoins. These are not just simple forks of Bitcoin. These are not like taking the Bitcoin repo and rebranding it. These are like proper blockchain frameworks, blockchain protocols. Um, and they are trying to solve all pretty much the same problem. So there is no such thing as the blockchain protocol. And so I was wondering, are there any standards? In the web, of course, you might know the RFC standards defined by the Internet Engineering Task Force. And they're like pretty, yeah, pretty technical standards. Um, and you can implement them the way you want, and that's fine. And you can say, hey, you implemented that right or wrong. 
And blockchain is a little bit different since I grant, yeah, that's a new technology, but still there are like no proper defined standards. No RFC exists for blockchain technology. There are those white papers. Next step is the yellow paper. Um, there are community defined standards like the BIP, the B Bitcoin improvement proposals, Ethereum improvement proposals. There are lots of well documented wikis where technical descriptions are written down. There are documentations and usually there's a reference implementations. But that's not what a blockchain standard should look like. So how can I how can I hack the blockchain? So what is what is the point I'm I'm going for? Um, so first I was I was trying to to make sense out of all this, and and I'm here by proposing a standard to categorize blockchain, and it looks kind of like this. There is a consensus design, a transaction design, and a block design. And those make up the blockchain design. And each of those primitives, those design primitives, they have some, some subcategories, some um, specifications in there. And defining on how you put those par parameters, an attack vector will work or will not work. So for a consensus design, you get a consensus algorithm. You might know proof of work, proof of stake, proof of authority, whatever. Um, Node authentication, is there any handshake? Is there any encryption between the peer discovery? How's that working? Governance is um, described as how is the code maintained? Who is the maintainer of the project? And transparency is the public permissionless or the private and permission blockchain. And the transaction design, design is what, uh, what is called a chain code, and it could be Bitcoin script. This is like Ethereum bytecode, and this is like, are the transaction anyhow programmable? Um, and then there's the cryptographically aspects of the transactions. So how is the transaction executed? And how can I execute any transaction? And the block design is actually the data structure. So how are the blocks stored in local nodes? Um, what is the block time between the blocks, which includes the difficulty, uh, the coin supply, is there any generic token on this blockchain? Um, and tokens refers to, can a user generate tokens on this blockchain? So this is still kind of boring. Um, what I wanted to add is like application design is not a matter of fact in this kind of characteristics. So the characteristics of each protocol would look like this. We got some kind of frameworks. We got the design primitives. So we look at the characteristics of this protocol and we, we see proof of work, no peer authentication, is decentralized and is permissionless. Okay? I guess you get the idea. You fill out all the characteristics for those blockchain frameworks and then you got kind of an overview of the landscape. That's just uh, taking the state as it is. That's fine. So, next step. You got some blockchain protocol attack vectors. And they're all well described and they're defined and they work on one or the other blockchain framework. But why do they work? And um, what do I have to change so that they don't work anymore? So I just um, take an example, like a 51% attack. Um, is an attack where you need the majority of computational power. And there's the blockchain, block zero, block one. Then the attacker takes one block and manipulates it in any favor so that usually he has an advantage, like he's changing any transaction. And afterwards, um, the chain is getting mined um, block after block. And eventually, since he has more computational power, he, uh, his chain is getting um, the longest and is getting the truth in a network and is getting accepted by all the nodes. So the conditions for this attack to work is that the network is permissionless and that is utilizes proof of work consensus algorithm. So I would call this consensus design attack. Okay? Next example would be a transaction malleability. Transaction malleability really briefly explained. 
is inside a transaction, there's something called the script, signature, and a public key. And this all gets hashed, and you get a transaction ID. Okay? Um, this transaction gets published to everybody in the network. Every node has this transaction. He can take it and modify it. Modify it in a way that it's still valid, but since it's modified a little bit, the hash value changes. This is transaction malleability. And the design conditions for this attack to work is that you need to have chain code in your blockchain and you need to have a transaction signature. So I would call this a transaction design attack. The last example is a spam attack. Up there you've got a transaction mempool. The transaction is coming in, getting processed into blocks, and the blocks are getting full with transactions. Okay? So, block after block. Now the spam attack works like this, like you might know from email. I'm just pushing a lot of cheap transactions into the mempool. And the mempool is getting full. But, as you might notice, the blocks are not getting fuller. The blocks stay the same, block after block. And in Bitcoin, it's roughly 10 minutes. Every 10 minutes, a block with the same amount of transactions. So the conditions for this design is how is the block time and how is the data structure inside these blocks. I would call this a block design attack, OK? So what do we do with that? OK, fine enough, we can categorize the block, um, blockchains, we can categorize the attack vectors, and attack vectors are categorized like this. We've got Ethereum, transaction design. There are all possible transaction design attacks, and there is a chain code exploit, what I would call, this for example is the DAO hack, would be a chain code exploit, and a botnet via, botnet via chain code is a, actually a quite fancy attack. Um, you could ask me later for that if you want. So those would work for Ethereum. Um, and you can check out the whole list on this GitHub down here if you want. Um, yeah. And you can also fill out the whole list for all frameworks, which attack works at which framework. And the reason why I'm telling you this is can you hack blockchain protocols? Yes, you can. Um, is, is this a problem? Um, since I've, I've told you in the beginning that, that all applications rely on protocols, this, this is a problem. Um, and since we are here to talk about individual freedom and crypto anarchy and crypto freedom, and blockchain might be a, a way to go with that. This is an even bigger threat to that vision, to that idea. And so I would give it a definitely a yes. Um, so what can we do about that problem? I, my answer to that is give it any kind of a standardization and give it um, a major approach to security research. And I've seen a lack of security research in that field. And I urge you all to give it a push and not just say that security by design is something that blockchain inherits. So there is no standard for blockchain security just yet. Um, so this urgent call is going to all of, to all of you guys. There, um, there is a GitHub out there. Um, you can collaborate, and there is no standard yet. Nobody has made a real effort to standardize anything. I would like to give a shout out to all of you guys. Collaborate and create something we can build the value on properly, and um, yeah, make the next step in the blockchain evolution. Thanks.